This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Jamaican sentenced to prison for raping underage girls in Cayman. A Jamaican man has been sentenced to eight and a half years in prison for raping two girls under the age of 12 and molesting a four-year-old. Neville Lloyd Passard, 57, was convicted in October 2021 of four counts of defilement and seven counts of indecent assault. The assault was discovered after a parent noticed a change in her young daughter's behavior and questioned the child. The girl told her mother that Passard had sexual intercourse with her on two occasions when she was between seven and eight years old. The child also told her mother that on one occasion, Passard asked her and the two other young girls who were between the ages of four and five years old to perform sexual acts on him. Two days after an initial confrontation with the children's parents, he was caught at the airport trying to return to Jamaica. In handing down the judgment last week, Justice Cheryl Richards said that the case is a serious one committed against the children whose care Passardo was entrusted with. Under the Cayman Islands Penal Code, a person convicted of defiling a child under the age of 12 years old can be sentenced to up to 20 years in prison. When considering the length of the sentence, Richards said that the location where the incidents occurred, the fact that Passardo used his position of trust to instruct the young girls not to tell their parents and that the subsequent impact of the very young victims were all aggravating factors. Those factors were balanced against the Passard's numerous medical conditions and the effect of serving a sentence would have on his health, his age and a deep concern that he might live out his last days in prison, his previous good character and his efforts at rehabilitation while in custody. When weighing the aggravating and the mitigating factors, Richards concluded that an alternative sentence to a custodial sentence was not appropriate. An original sentence of 11 years and 3 months was imposed, however that was discounted by 25% for a final sentence of 8 years and 6 months. Since his arrest, he has spent 953 days on curfew, which resulted in a further 283 days being deducted from his sentence. The 7 months that he has spent in custody following his conviction will also be deducted from his overall prison time. Manhunt launch for man who shot another during party dispute in St. Mary. Police are now searching for a man who allegedly shot and killed another during a dispute in Stuart Town, St. Mary on Sunday morning. Dead is 27-year-old Jermaine Barrington of a Stuart Town address. Information reaching the news is that Barrington was at a party in the area about 1.30 a.m. Sunday when he and a man were involved in an altercation. Patrons at the event reportedly intervened and the man left. Further reports are that some time later, Barrington and the man became involved in a second dispute at the event during which the latter allegedly pulled a firearm. Barrington reportedly received a gunshot wound to the upper body. His attacker fled the scene. The wounded man was assisted to the hospital where he died while being treated. His death brings to 18 the number of people murdered in St. Mary since the start of the year. Bojo and Curry barred from entering Rio Grande Valley. The news has been informed that international reggae artist Bojo Banton was a short while ago barred from entering the upper Rio Grande Valley where the Morton Maroons are expected to hold an election today. The news team understands that the entertainer was stopped and questioned at a security checkpoint in fellowship by members of the security forces who then refused him entry. The commanding officer for the Portland Police Division, Superintendent Kenneth Chin, has confirmed that the artist was stopped at a checkpoint. He was, however, unable to provide additional information about what transpired between the reggae artist and the lawmen. He told the news that he would try to get more details on the situation. However, a police source told the news team that Banton, whose real name is Mark Mary, was stopped along with an entourage traveling in a bus. He was questioned about his presence in the area and then refused the entry into the Upper Rio Grande Valley by the police military team, which also ordered him to turn back. The news was also informed that a similar warning was issued to Chief of the Akampong Maroons in St. Elizabeth, Richard Curry, earlier today, 
after he was reportedly intercepted at an undisclosed location by members of the police military team. Anxiety is growing in Moortown, which is located in the Upper Rio Grande Valley in eastern Portland. An 18-year-old member of the community, Lomora Dillon, is seeking to unseat Colonel Wallace Sterling for leadership of the Moortown Maroons. Sterling has led the Maroons in that section of Portland for some 30 years. However, the Moortown Maroon Council has reportedly not sanctioned an election, leaving Maroons to wonder whether the election will be held. Demolition exercise in Morante Bay halted after skeleton remains are found. The St. Thomas police have launched an investigation after human skeleton remains were found in an abandoned building that was being demolished by parish authorities on Sunday morning. The news was informed that one set of remains was found in a coffin inside the building and the two other skulls were found elsewhere in the dilapidated structure which is located across from Morante Bay Police Station. The structure is said to have once served as a larger building. The remains were discovered some time after 9 o'clock. The demolition exercise, which was being carried out by a team from the St. Thomas Municipal Corporation as part of a drive to knock down old structures in the parish capital, had to be halted to allow the police to investigate. A source told the news that it had long been listed for demolition by the local council under the Dangerous Structure Act. We serve a notice on the building for it to be demolished. There were no occupants and the owner for the building couldn't be located, so we put up a notice just to notify the public that it's going to be wrecked, the person said, adding that in the past, vendors illegally used the sections of the structure but were ordered to remove their belongings. The source also informed the news that the space is sometimes occupied by a man believed to be of unsound mind. Police to review footage of Manchester mob killing as they seek to make arrests. The police will be reviewing footage of Friday's mob killing of Chieftain Campbell in Mandeville, Manchester to identify the participants. Video captured by persons at the scene of the incident on Friday has been circulating. Speaking with the news, the head of the constabulary's corporate communications unit Senior Superintendent Stephanie Lindsay said the constabulary's technical team has been engaged to commence the review process, which will begin shortly. We have not identified anyone just yet. We are hoping that the technology will aid us because in a situation like this, nobody is going to come forward to say this or say what happened, she said. If we recognize anybody who was a part of it, then certainly persons are going to be held accountable, she warned. The news reported that about midday on Friday, Campbell was walking on Manchester Road in the parish capital when he was accused of stealing money. He was set upon and beaten by persons responding to the alarm. The police intervened and took Campbell to hospital for treatment, but he died some time after 5 p.m. Residents of Campbell's community, Victoria Town in South Manchester, blocked the roads leading to the town square Saturday morning to protest his killing. The residents claimed that Campbell was conducting business when he was robbed. They said the real thieves then raised the alarm, causing the mob to attack Campbell. Residents described Campbell, who is a member of a school board in the community, as an icon. Jamaica reports 227 new COVID cases, two more deaths. Jamaica on Saturday reported 227 new cases of the COVID-19 and the two virus-related deaths in the last 24-hour period. This brings the total number of cases recorded on the island since the start of the pandemic to 131,161 and the death toll to 2,977. Of the newly reported cases, there were 137 females and 88 males with ages ranging from one day to 108 years. The cases were recorded as follows. Kingston and St. Andrew 60, St. James 75, St. Anne 20, St. Catherine 19, Westmoreland 19, Hanover 8, St. Elizabeth 2, St. Mary 5, Trelawney 1, Clarendon 3, Manchester 10, and St. Thomas 1. Meanwhile, the latest fatalities are a 38-year-old woman from St. Catherine, whose death was recorded in March 2021, and an 87-year-old woman, also from St. Catherine, whose death was recorded in May 2021.
According to the latest statistics from the Ministry of Health and Wellness, the country also recorded 121 new recoveries, bringing the total number of recoveries to 84,399. The country's positivity rate from the latest batch of testing is a 14.7 percent. There are 1,298 confirmed active cases on the island. Approximately 52 patients have been hospitalized. Two of them are critically ill. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.